so this is another one of my videos where I'm probably gonna get myself in trouble. But, you know, it's what I do. So a lot of you physics nerds out there are probably familiar with this concept, right? This is Einstein's theory of gravity. And the idea is that space-time is kind of like a bed sheet and objects are like bowling balls that go into the middle of a bed sheet and cause a depression. In it. And according to this theory, when something comes by, it gets stuck in that little depression and that's what gives it the, the curve that, that goes around. This is all well and good, except it's only two dimensional. And we live in at least three dimensions, depending on how you argue it. And gravity applies in all directions. It's not just down, it's all directions. So how do you solve this problem? Fortunately, I have an idea. And it's this. Here's a quick recap. I don't think this model of gravity is accurate. It just doesn't work. Fortunately, thanks to some very low quality graphics, I have an idea that I think does work. In my theory, gravity isn't like a bowling ball sitting on top of a bed sheet. It's more like a bowling ball inside of a sock, right? And in this, you've got the Earth, and you've got the Moon and maybe the earth is a bowling ball and the moon is like, I don't know, a baseball. And if you can picture this or do the experiment, maybe I'll do it later, take a softball and a golf ball and put them both inside a sock and tie it and throw it up in the air and watch them spin around each other. Hmm. Like this. Now, in fairness, this does solve a couple problems, but doesn't solve all the problems. Fortunately, I got that too. One of the many problems with my uh, hypothesis about gravity is that it only accounts for things like, you know, the Earth and the Moon, or maybe the Sun and the Earth, or like other planets. Because you can visualize, you know, if gravity isn't really like a solid thing, it's not a sock, then these things are moving around each other and they're always being influenced by other gravitational forces, right? But what causes the gravity in the first place? This demonstrates how they interact with each other, but what's the cause? Hmm. According to my idea, this is the cause right here. So, in this, what these circles are is space-time. You don't think of space-time in 2D, space -time, you think of space-time in 3D. And all of these little things are one individual Planck length. See the Planck length? And each one of those little circles is spinning incredibly, incredibly fast, giving it a positive and negative charge. Then, when a photon comes along, it so up until this point, it's been fairly straightforward and easy to visualize, but this is kind of the part where it gets a little bit complicated. So if you can visualize this, think of this as like little magnetic ball bearings, all those little magnetic balls, right? And they're all stuck together and densely packed together, right? And they just form that grid. Except each one of those magnetic balls is one plank length in uh, diameter, which is essentially the distance that light can travel in one second. Now, according to the holographic universe theory, uh, and don't quote me on this, look it up for yourself, but atoms are being refreshed at a rate of something like 10 to the 44th uh, times per second. It's pretty quick. So, as this photon is moving into that, it's exciting those energy particles and those, uh, those Planck lengths and spreading them apart and creating a negative force between them. So, when this photon is coming through and it, and it excites those and creates that negative force, it pulls those things apart and it, that creates a vacuum within this, right? So, then what ends up happening is that other photons and when the photons come together and they, they are the things that start to form matter, then that negative uh, charge within there draws other things into it. And that's why anything that has matter has gravity. Sorry. Anything that has mass has gravity. The part that's the real mind blower is that in order for this to work, then you have to be moving through uh, the pixels of time space all the time, space time rather. You have to be moving through the pixels of space time being refreshed at the atomic level uh, 10 to the 44th times per second. And that's how gravity is working to hold you down to the earth and being influenced by the sun and the moon. 
one of the confusing parts about my hypothesis is that a lot of people often think of a photon as actually being a light particle. But it can't be. The only thing that a photon can actually be is an energy potential. And if you look at some other videos and you know anything about energy, you'll know that energy is never truly created or never truly destroyed. There's a fixed amount of energy within the universe. And we also know that matter is created by energy. So, these are just potentials. Now, this is the part of the thing that uh, I haven't been able to prove yet and I can't demonstrate. It's really hard to kind of wrap your head around. But, I believe there's a missing law of thermodynamics. If you look at the laws of thermodynamics, they're all about describing entropy and how things tend to fall apart. But there's nothing in there that describes how they come back together again. My hypothesis is that intention is the driving force that takes these energy potentials and creates them. All right, so let me talk about intention a little bit. What I mean by intention is the, the thing that creates, not, I, don't, I hate the word creates, but generates something out of nothing. Like we learned from the double slit experiment that the observer can influence the experiment. And I, but I don't think it's something that's necessarily human. You know, I think it's uh, a power of this thing of consciousness. You know, it's, it's the big, it's the hard question. And, um, but I think that anything that has intention behind it, you can measure the you know, level of intention by how long the thing lasts. So for example, uh, a tree has an, in, an intention because it grows a tree and lasts for centuries if, if it wants to. A beaver has intention because it builds a dam and uses it for a couple of years. Humans have intention because we built the pyramids and they're still standing around. And so the question is, what was the original intention? Okay, one last thought on my theory of gravity, and that is the uh, the grid of little balls. There's a um, there's a theory called quantum foam. I forget the name of the scientist who developed it, but it was like back in 1927 where he came up with the idea of quantum foam. So when I came up with the idea, I was like, oh, this is brilliant, and then I googled it, and it's totally already a thing. But well, my theory is different, is that they're actually locked in place. His quantum foam, there was kind of like this morphous bubbling thing, but if you give them an electrical charge and they stay locked in a grid and it becomes like a pixel, like a computer screen. Here's where it gets really interesting, is that if my theory works, then each one of those is a potential universe, which is interesting, and the strings in string theory is where those balls actually meet. Like picture bubbles in a sink, like two bubbles meet and there's like a line, that's the string.